I'd like to talk about fuel consumption trip planning. The days are long gone when we can just go out on a trip and run out of fuel and expect somebody to rescue us. We're exposing ourselves to the dangers and we don't need to do that. Things have to change. And to do that, we must plan our trips, plan our journey before we go. Have a think about the distance we've got to travel. And the basic thing you're going to need is a marine chart, absolutely quite distinct from a, a map that you go on road trips with. This is a marine chart. It's got all of the navigation marks for us and latitude and longitudes for position. More than just position, it gives us distance. And I've just drawn here to simulate a chart, a marine chart. 0, 2, 7 degrees latitude, 0, 2, 8 degrees latitude. 1 degree in latitude. And I've just pretended the 60 graduated, one for each minute of a degree. Now, each one minute of a degree, that distance on the latitude scale, like this, is one nautical mile. Now, you might think, what's one nautical mile got to do with speed? It's a bit different and a bit foreign to what you've been talking about with kilometres per hour, etc. Just forget that for a minute. One nautical mile per hour is one knot, and that's the unit of speed we commonly refer to in boating. So let's accept that fact. One nautical mile per hour is one knot. Now let's take a chart like this, and don't be frightened of drawing this chart. This is not a Rembrandt, this is a working document. And when it's tatty after being rubbed out that many times and drawn on, throw it away and get a new one. But it's a working document we're going to draw our trip like this. And I've drawn this one to simulate from Manly to Tangaluma. How far is that? Well, we can find that out in the chart. A bit of paper or dividers on this and put it over on the chart and we count down. Lo and behold, there was 20 graduations, which means it's 20 nautical miles across from Manly to Tangaluma. And to bring that back and to work out the times, we need to look at something basic like how fast is our boat going to go? What's the cruising speed of our boat? And let's assume, without trying to define what sort of boat this is, it runs at 10 knots. 10 knots. That's 10 nautical miles per hour. To go over the 20 miles, we've got two hours to go over there, and we've got two hours to come back. We've got four hours running we're going to have to provide for in this trip. Four hours to start with. Now, we're straight away we come to and say, how much fuel per hour do we want? And that is what we're talking about, the burn rate of our motor. What I want you to do is not look up manufacturer specifications and get all complicated with varying degrees of accuracy in any case. I just want you to get your boat, fill it right up to the brim with fuel, take it boating, say, for two hours, drive that boat the way you drive, not the way somebody else tells you to drive, but the way you drive that boat. If you're a bit lead-footed, so be it, but drive it your way. Come back after two hours, top it up again. And how much fuel do you take? Let's say 60 litres. That means you have a burn rate of 30 litres per hour. You can write that in the back of your diary because that's valuable information for you to maintain as far as your boat goes and trip calculations and trip planning. 30 litres per hour you use. Now let's come back to this. To go that 20 nautical miles across and back, we've worked out there, we've got four hours running. Four hours times 30 litres equals 120 litres. 120 litres. That is not enough to go on the trip with. We want to plan a third of our fuel to go to where we're going, a third to come back, and a third in reserve. Why do we want that third in reserve? What's that all about? We want to stop ourselves from running out of fuel, and this is why. With the wind blowing against the tide, for example, the waves increase in height, we can't get the boat up on the plane, the, plane, the boat is now operating in semi-displacement mode, using a lot more fuel. That 30% has got to carry that. That's what it's there for. You might have went over last week and used so much fuel and you had three people in your boat. You go this week and lo and behold, you've still got three people, but they're heavier people. They're a lot more weight in your boat. You will use more fuel. That 30% margin is to cover those contingencies. That's what that's about. So we start with 120, and I don't care if your accuracy, not, accuracy is not there with all of your calculation, but let's just say another third is about, is about 40 litres. So we can say, about 160 litres is what you want for that trip. And you should go over there, 
enjoy yourself, come home and have reserve fuel left. You've completed your trip without running out of fuel and I might point out to you, this calculation you've done with your burn rate, that stays the same for that boat and motor combination you've got. Keep that in your diary. You don't have to do that all the time. However, if you change your motor or change your boat, you get a different combination, then you must redo that exercise. That will ensure safe boating for you. There is no doubt about that.